Good morning, everybody, and I want to welcome you guys back into the shop. As you can see behind me, today I think we're gonna be working on the 69 Camaro. We've got a handful of things to do, and then hopefully this thing is ready to go out to paint and body. Also, as it goes out to paint and body, I, and I might do this later on, I'm, we might take a little trip up to the body shop, but I think there's a very good possibility that by the end of the day today, Kevin C10 should have some color on it. So that's, uh, for those of you that have been asking me on the channel about where I'm at on his truck, that's kind of where we're at. I might walk up front and kind of show you guys where, uh, where the frame and the chassis is sitting. And uh, anyway, but today we've got a couple of things as you can see, I've got the, uh, the grill and the headlights all bolted back into the car. And I've been working on the flush mounted glass. Now, I've had two tries to get glass delivered and both times the, the front windshield has been busted. So luckily the company I ordered those from, without hesitation, they send me a brand new set. So anyway, hopefully we'll get a good glass that we can do some fitting with. So uh, anyway, I want to uh, thank you guys for subscribing to the channel. And if you haven't already, uh, reach down there and hit that subscribe button and uh, give this one a like and uh, come along. Let's see what, uh, what all we can get done today. Let the Canadian gooses go by. I got no idea what that is. Big ass bee. Horse fly. Shoot, I don't know. Hang on, I'm gonna go check this out. Okay, just a quick rundown on some of the things that are left to do on the car. <clears throat> Earlier I did mention the flush mounted glass. Um, as I said, I do have the back glass. That's some of the stuff that we'll, we will be working on in this video, hopefully as long as it doesn't get too long. Additionally, we're gonna be tucking the front and rear bumpers. Now, I've never done those before on a car, so it's gonna be somewhat of a learning curve. Also, the we also have the engine, which is sitting here behind me. I have the engine and transmission. Now, this is an LS3. It's, it's basically, it comes in completely dyno-tuned from Blueprint Engines. I have to change the oil pan on that, so I've got the oil pan ordered. Basically, I want to fit the engine and transmission, which we were gonna be running a 4L80 in this car. Now we're gonna be doing a, a T56. So that's just a few of the things that we have yet to finish up. Additionally, I think if you look back on the back of the car, up around the quarter panels, where the quarter panels and the roof skin meets, there's still some trimming and there's, a, there's some metal that needs to be put in there. But anyway, I'm going to get set up and uh, I, we're going to start looking at this front bumper. That's the reason why I have the grill and everything bolted back in it. So let's, uh, let's, let me get set up and we'll see what we can get done today. So I have a couple of different bumpers. I actually got the one, the bumper that was on the car and then I've got a couple other ones. We're more than likely, once this tuck is done, we're going to color match the bumpers. So. The chrome won't really matter. In fact, most of the chrome will have to get ground off. So anyway, I've got the brackets on and basically what we're gonna try to accomplish is these bumpers, they sit pretty low from the factory. And what I wanna accomplish, and it's gonna be a little bit hard with this bracket, but I basically wanna tuck that bumper up into this grill and make this bumper actually fit this recess in the grill. So that's kind of where we're at. And I think the best way to do it is probably just cut this bumper right in half and work a side at a time and then weld it back together in the center. So I think that's the approach.
So this is an older bumper that I had laying around. And as we can see, it's already cracked right here. The chrome's not the best shape in the world. So since none of that matters, I think we're gonna start, we're gonna use this bumper as our donor. So I'm gonna cut this thing in half and then we'll start seeing what we need to do to build brackets. Round one of the trimming process is complete. And I do believe this is pretty much the look that, uh, that I think we're going to try to achieve. Now, as you can see, my gap is still a little bit, it's still a little bit excessive here. I'll reduce this gap. Also, I want to, to work on this roll here and maybe try to fill in a little bit more down here in the lower section of this bar part. So, I think we're gonna to try to maintain an eighth to a three sixteenths gap here. And I don't think that's gonna to be too much. It is gonna require, I'll probably end up having to, to split this and add some sections to that. So also across the grill, you see where the bumper meets it. I've gotta straighten that up just a little bit more and we'll probably try to stay with the same eighth to three sixteenths gap there. Additionally, the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of these holes that uh, for the bumper bolts and I'm going to incorporate those in the bumper brackets. So I think the brackets, the, the original brackets are no way they're gonna fit, so I'm gonna end up having to custom build a set of brackets. So I think that's probably what we're gonna do next. So now I can show you what I did earlier now that I have this piece off. And I think I got a direction, a good game plan forward for this center bracket. So I was talking earlier, I ended up, you can see, I just kind of made me a new tab right here. And before I did that, I shaped a piece of metal. And if you look real close, you'll see, I shaped that piece of metal to the, to the contour of the inside of that bumper. Then I just tacked that on there. Then with this tab on here, I was able to just put me some tacks here. And what I'll end up doing is I'll, I'll fully weld this entire tab to the inside of this bumper. So on this one, as you can see, I took this, which is the factory bracket, and I was able to trim this out. Now, now that that is done, I'm gonna end up putting me a couple of reference holes in this so I can take this back off. And then I'm gonna wire wheel and I'm gonna clean all of this up. And then I'm probably gonna do the exact same thing on, on the other one where I'll weld all of this bracketry to this bumper. Once this is all welded up in here solid, then I'll end up, I may take this tab completely out because I told you I wasn't gonna use any bolts. Next thing I'll have to do is, since this thing, you can kind of see this is, is pulled up just a little bit. Once I get this piece locked in, 
I'll bend this down and I'll weld that to the inside and then I'll fill the hole. So that's what I'm gonna set up and do next. And then once I get this one done, then I'm gonna hopefully, we'll be able to duplicate this on the other side. proved to be a lot of work, but uh, I think I have this thing set up the way I want it. So anyway, if you'll look and see, I was talking about, I ended up welding this bracket completely around there and I TIG welded this and then I kind of blended this. So this was, this is pretty much the lower bracket. Additionally, as you can see, I got rid of all the holes, got rid of all the bumper bolts. I went ahead and I filled this one, I blended it. And then as I was saying, Earlier, I went ahead and I've got everything welded. Now on this bracket here, I showed you guys earlier, and it's, as you can see, I cut, I cut the bracing off of this. I will probably bend me a piece and put back in here to reinforce that. So additionally, I did quite a bit of work to this bracket. This is the bracket that bolts to the subframe and I had to rework the angle here. So I ended up doing a slice here and I turned it up. I ended up putting a couple of bolts through it and I tack welded those. And then of course I boxed it in. So this will actually look a lot cleaner. So anyway, I'm gonna throw this stuff on the car and then I'll grab the camera and I'll show you guys what it's gonna look like once it is installed. Of course now this is only half of it. I have the other side to do. So anyway, let me get this thrown on here and we'll see what it looks like. Now that I have it bolted on, it is, it's getting later in the evening and let's see, hopefully my lights, my overhead lights don't glare us. But anyway, I've got it bolted on. And as you can see, I really like the look, um, did say earlier, I might put a little more in there, but not too sure that I will, but the bumper, let me climb up here on the ladder because I've got it raised pretty high, but anyway, it tucks in rather nice. And this piece is pretty solid, so it's not going to go anywhere. Now, granted, you start welding on stuff, and it will find the place to flex. Now, as I was saying, bolt holes are gone. And this bracket, you'll see the front of this, so that's the reason why I boxed it. So it just gives it a little bit cleaner look. So anyway, it uh it's getting pretty late so i think i'm going to uh i'm going to call it a night and i'm going to come back tomorrow hopefully i can knock out this other side and once the front bumper's done we'll either we're either going to move to the glass or we'll jump back and we'll start doing the rear bumper so anyway you guys have a good evening and i'll see you back here in the morning all right we're here at chris's shop so we're going to get out and run inside and take a look at kevin's c10 y'all want to come along okay we're inside. Looks like he's got the lights off, so we'll just flip the old lights on. Let the camera adjust. Let's see if I can back this out. There we go. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. She is painted. The cab, I believe the fenders, the hood, the bed is still outside. We, uh, we wanted to get this part done, so it looks pretty good to me. Let's give the old fenders a glance. She's ready for uh, color sand and buff. 
Sometimes these cameras, they don't do it, uh, they don't do these paint jobs unless you're under some really, really good lighting. But it's got a pretty good sheen to it. It, uh, it will buff out and look really, really nice. But uh, there it is. We've been waiting on this day for quite a while to get this thing painted. So hopefully uh, another couple of weeks let this cure out and they can get it color sanded and buffed before we put it on the frame. Because if anybody, if you know anything about anything about color sanding and buffing, that stuff gets everywhere. So firewall looks pretty good. It's got a really nice, it's really glossy. I know I got the fender wells and a handful of parts at the shop already. And a lot of the stuff that's already painted, it's got a really good shine to it. So anyway, uh, there it is. We uh, hopefully we'll get it back to the shop pretty quick and uh, then we can start getting this thing put on the chassis and get everything lined up and uh, hopefully get this thing back to Kevin. So anyway, we'll see you guys in the later. All right, it's a brand new day. So good morning, everybody. And I want to welcome you guys back. Hopefully, hopefully you came back to watch the rest of this. But uh, Anyway, yesterday we got, uh, we got half the bumper tucked and got everything pretty well finished out on this side. This is all bolted in. So I'm not gonna waste any more time. I'm gonna jump into the middle of this other side and we're gonna get this thing roughed in and get, hopefully by the end of the day, we'll have this entire front bumper done. So on this side, I think I'm gonna be able to film just a little bit more since I was figuring out the process on this side yesterday. Hopefully I can kind of show you guys a little bit more of the steps that I went through. So anyway, we'll see how it goes, but uh, we're going to uh, we're going to get right after it. So one of the first things that we have to do is I've got this thin plate. This is about 85 thousandths thick. It's uh, some leftover from I think a Detroit speed mini tub setup. But anyway, I'm going to cut some tabs out so we can start fabricating the the lower bracket for the outside of the bumper. So. Now that those are cut, I will use this transfer punch. This is the original tab bracket that went on the bottom of that bumper. So I'll, I'm gonna transfer those holes onto here. Also, I guys told you earlier, I had actually taken a piece and I, I bent the contour to weld to the inside of the bumper. So I'll do that. Also, I went ahead and I've got this bumper, this bumper piece prepped. I've got everything ground off the back side and I've knocked down the front side as well. Try to knock some of the chrome off. That way I won't have quite as much to do here in just a bit. So anyway, I've got to get that done next. Now that I have the brackets cut and I've got this one shaped, the next thing is pretty much I'm going to bolt this in and I'll start trimming this down. Also, this one, I'll, I will tack it to the inside of this piece of the bumper. Now, I did go ahead and I prepped this bumper I was talking about earlier, and I went to put this thing up there and fit it. And I just happened to notice, I don't know if you'll see it on camera, but this thing has a really bad leg. It's bowed really bad. I don't, I don't know why, but it didn't affect the other side. And to be fair, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to straighten this, so I may have to go find another bumper and cut it in half and use it. So anyway, the challenges continue. Uh, another thing, I don't know if you can see, but uh, I got a little piece of paper up here. If you're gonna put a piece of tab, a tab of steel like this on a car that's got a sharp edge, you might wanna mark it with something before you walk into it. So anyway, uh, that's the tech tip for the day, or excuse me, the uh, safety tip of the day. So anyway, I'm gonna see if I can find another piece of bumper and uh, try to get it cleaned up and get it to this point. Cause after I get it cleaned up and get it ready, it's for the most part, it's just kind of hold it up in here into place and then try to work this out to get it like I've got the other side. So anyway, we'll continue. So i finally made it back to where I was at a couple of hours ago. I was able to find another bumper. Thank goodness I had a stack of these things and I got the other bumper cut in half and I got this piece, got most of the chrome ground off of here, got the, uh, did some sandblasting on the back side of it. Also, there was, I had to do some work on this. The lip was, was kind of bent through the years of abuse. But anyway, I'm finally back to where I was at now. I think before I do anything to this bracket, I've set this up here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set this up here and I'm going to start trimming areas that I need to trim 
in order to, to get this fit close to where I want it. So once I get it there, then I'll start building out this first bracket. So that's what we're gonna do next. Now that I have the bumper trimmed up, and as you saw, I went ahead, I did tack the piece in on the back side of this, the piece that I had shaped for the inside. I've got it tacked into place. I also was able to get a measurement on the, the bracket tab here. So I've got it pretty close to where it needs to be. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tack this bracket onto that inner piece and that will set the height and the distance right here. So once that's done, then I'm gonna move over and we'll start working on this bracket here. So that's what we're gonna do now. So after a few adjustments and a uh, few choice words, I was finally able to get this thing somewhat dialed in. The I had to do a little more trimming to the bottom of this bumper right here to get the bottom of it to roll in to take out the gap that I was wanting. So as you can see, it's fitting pretty good. Um, right here, I'll end up splitting this and I'll raise this up like I did on the other side. The gap across here looks pretty straightforward. However, right in the center of this bumper, from about here to about here, it's like the bumper spread apart. So I'll have to massage that just a little bit. But in all, I feel like I've got this bracket locked into place. So I think I'm gonna take it over to the table. I'm gonna finish welding this one together um, not really going to film that, but then once I get that done, I'm going to put it back up here and we'll start working on the middle bracket. Okay. I have the two bumper brackets for the driver's side and I went ahead and ran these through the, the bead blaster and cleaned them up just a little bit. Additionally on this one, as you can see in the picture above me, there's, there's was some previous sins from someone using a cutting torch and also, I went ahead and since this bumper is sliding back and up just a little bit, I filled in the, the factory holes that this bolts to. So also on this piece, like I showed you guys on the other side, I have to trim this out so it will clearance this lower glance. So I'm gonna trim this up and before I weld this one into the bumper, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll reflange this. So. Anyway, that's what I'm gonna set up and uh, we're gonna get these bolted in next and see if we can get this bracket finished out.
at this point, I have two things left to do to finish up this side of the bumper. So one, as you can see, I already drilled the holes and I've got these bolts spot welded from the back. The next thing, as you guys saw on the other bracket, I'm gonna cap the back of this and it's pretty straightforward. I just have a template here that I will transfer to a piece of flat metal. Then I'll just weld it on here and get it shaped and then I'll just blend this out. The last thing that I need to do on this side of the bumper is I'll have to come in here and this is where I'll weld this bracket to the bumper on both sides. And once I get this locked in, I have to fit just a little bit here. That bracket's a little high. I don't wanna bend that in there just yet before I get these welded. And then once that's kind of fit in there a little bit better, then I'll spot this hole in and dress it up. So anyway, I'm gonna do that next. Okay, as you can see, I've got the other side finished. <clears throat> I went ahead and I bolted it up after all the welding. I wanna make sure nothing pulled and anything distorted and got out of shape. So it fits pretty good. There, there is a couple of areas on the grill itself that it's a little bit wavy. So I'll have to do a little bit of shimming to get that straightened out. But in all, I feel pretty comfortable. So now that I have two separate sections, as you can guess, the next trick is going to be to merge the two of these. So I'm going to get set up and uh, we'll see if I, can, uh, if I can make these things both come together. Okay, I set my laser up and I'm shooting the front of this car. I think this might actually work. I'm using that center, basically this center bar. You can see the, the laser. And I'm using that as the absolute center. And it hits when you look up at the top. You can't really see it, I don't think, but it hits pretty close to the center. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to, where that line is hitting across the bumper, I think I'm gonna mark that. And then I'm gonna put a reference mark down here on this tape. I'm gonna mark the bumper over here where it somewhat fits to where I can get it back in the same spot. There's not a whole lot of side to side adjustment on this at the moment. So I think what I can do is I'm gonna mark that bumper there and then I'm gonna unbolt this one and then I'm gonna put the other one up there and mark the same with the reference line on the car. I'm, I'm hoping that that will kind of give me an eyeball shot as far as that's where it's gonna be. So we'll give that a try. Now that I've got both halves of the bumper, I've, pretty got, I've got them pretty close. The, the laser dialed me in very, very close, but I still had to do some trimming to get, to get them both pulled in where I wanted them. Also, I've beveled both edges of the bumper, so I'll have a good penetrated weld whenever I do that. And as you can see, I've got the big welder over here. So anyway, I'm gonna get this tacked up. Now, another thing that I did notice and I didn't realize this until I actually started to put these two together, but the arcs on the top of the bumper, since these were two separate bumper halves, 
there's differences there. So I'm going to end up getting the front side of it, probably the first third of this tacked in real good. And once I get that tacked in really well, I'll probably go ahead and put the bracket back in on the driver's side. Once that's done, then it's just going to be very slow. I'm going to have to work the metal in just a little bit. Hopefully I don't make too much. So it's basically going to be probably going to do some welding. Then I'm going to do some hammering, dollying, dollying, and then refit. So I don't think I'm going to film a bunch of that. So I think the next time I cut in, hopefully this will all be one piece. So anyway, I'm going to get this thing, get this thing welded out and uh, I'll see you guys shortly. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I was able to get both bumper pieces put back together. As you can see, I got a little bit carried away. I went ahead, I've got everything blended. I also, I made a slice, I pie cut both sides of the bumper and went ahead and got those fitting a lot better. So that looks pretty good. I had to do a little modification underneath on this filler panel and that I'll correct once I pull this off. It's uh, just a slight modification, but anyway, um, I got the, uh, I got it together and I'm very pleased with the way it has turned out. Now, I still haven't quite made up my mind. I may end up extending these or I might end up just taking them out, which will require quite a bit of shaping to that bumper. But anyway, there it is. So now that I have the front, I think we're going to uh, possibly move back to the rear section. Good morning, everybody. I'm back in the shop. And I did say yesterday that now that the front of the bumpers, the front bumper is done, that we were gonna move around to the rear bumper. However, last night as I was editing the video, it's gonna get a little bit lengthy. So I think instead today, I told you guys the other day that we had an LS3 that's gotta go in the, in the car and I have to change the oil pan on that before it will fit. So I'm going to, basically I'm gonna roll the engine over, I'm gonna change the oil pan and then I think we'll, we'll fit the engine. And I've got a T56 Magnum laying down here in a box. I think we're gonna pre-fit this stuff into the car and maybe even possibly drop the headers in. So anyway, come along and uh, let's see if we can get this thing uh, installed. I rolled the engine over and got it upside down. I, I had already drained what was left of the break-in oil out of it. There, there wasn't but about a half a quart. So pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna buzz, buzz these bolts out of here and uh, pull the pan off. We are going to be using a Holly. It, the part number is a 302-3 kit. It comes with a new pickup too. Also, the, the gas oil pan is kind of nice because if you are running the turbo application, you have these ports on both sides where if you did have to run a drain back for your turbos, you've got this already tapped into the pan. You don't have to, a lot of times people will weld some AN fittings on the uh, on the timing recovery. But anyway, there's also some modifications. I got to read the instructions a little bit. There are some modifications I have to do to the windage tray. And from everything that I've researched, this should clear the cross member as well as the ride tech steering linkages. So anyway, I'm going to uh, see if I can get all of this together and we'll get this pan back on this engine. Now that I have that windage tray modified, basically you have to cut the front of this off. And I'm gonna tell you, this was kind of a pain because the measurements that it gave me was in, in thousands. So, you know, try to figure center line of this, this direction, 750 thousandths, 
331 thousandths. I mean, it was, it was a pain in the butt, just to say the least. So anyway, be sure after you do your modifications to this, wash it real well. I've, I've washed it, I've blown it off with air. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to install the pan and real quick, these are the areas where I will put some, some sealant. Now that the engine's set in place, I've got the car lifted up. For my next magic trick, I have to manhandle that, which this is a T56. This is a T56 Magnum, which is supposed to have a little bit smaller footprint than the factory original uh, six speeds that uh, GM uses. But anyway, I have to manhandle that onto that jack and I truly need a, a dual stage jack so that thing will go lower, but I've got the bell housing laid over there. So the next, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is try to get this transmission set up in there and then the cross member. I got the transmission up on the jack and I kind of tried to trick you guys, but no, this, these things are pretty heavy. So use the cherry picker to get up there. It's a little bit slower process, but since I'm here by myself, it is what it is. One of these days I will invest in a dual stage jack because my lift is all the way up and I ended up, I had to go up just a little bit more off the lock just to get this thing under here. Plus, I turned this thing sideways because the, the side profile isn't quite as tall, but it is underneath here. And of course, you guys have never been underneath this car. I have done a lot of metal work to this thing. But anyway, I've got the bell housing laying there. I'm gonna get it bolted to the engine and then I'm gonna stick the transmission in. Now, I only need to get the transmission mated to the engine and then I wanna put the cross member in just so I can check my my engine and transmission angle. Additionally, I wanna make sure I don't have to do any modifications to this beautiful trans tunnel. So I'm gonna get this thing put in and uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we won't have to do any modifications. That's pretty much gonna wrap up the installation of the engine and transmission. Now, a couple of things to note here. <clears throat> One, this is the cross member that we actually ordered for the 4L80 transmission that we were gonna run. And I do believe I like the way it fits in the car better. So I'm gonna have to make just a little bit of a, I'm gonna have to make an adapter bracket right here, which is not a big deal. Um, the other one, I didn't really like how it fit in the car. It actually was hitting the floorboard. So this, this modification will be very, very minor. In fact, it's just gonna be a piece of plate metal to move the, the mount forward. So 
Anyway, I'm gonna leave that there. I have plenty of room to get additional engine and driveline angle. And right now I'm sitting at about two and a half to three degrees down, which is pretty good for the car being this low. So anyway, I think, uh, I think that's going to wrap this video up and I want to thank you guys for tuning in and hopefully that you, hopefully you guys made it to the end of this. And, uh, I want to, uh, I want to thank you guys, um, for the subscriptions and also thank you for the comments. So Please keep it up and we'll keep this thing moving along. And as I always say, I will see you on the next one.